Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. This is your daily support call. Uh, today we're very fortunate to have Alex Bornemisa with us. Alex is a lead fitness trainer at uh, Good Life Fitness in Pickering. Uh, is that correct, Alex? That's correct. Awesome. So again, thank you so much for making the time today. Uh, I'd like to really just let's get into it and, and talk about what's going on in the world right now. That's why we've been doing this daily support call. Uh, it's how we're supporting our clients, our families, and our community. Um, so, you know, fitness training, very hands-on, very in your face, very congested space. Uh, gyms are already known for not being the, you know, best when it comes to hygiene, et cetera, et cetera. I know that Good Life has, you know, proactively closed all of its facilities for now. So besides the obvious, let's, let's talk about how has this affected your business? I mean, <clears throat> yeah, thanks for having me on, Marcus. It's, uh, it's an interesting period right now because we are used to being face-to-face -face with people, right? We're not used to, um, you know, not having that interaction. So, um, doing calls such as this is, is quite frankly new to me. And so <clears throat> looking at how can we, you know, transition our coaching style so that we're no longer, you know, comfortable um, in the ways that we had coached before. So, you know, I've been really doing a lot of research, a lot of webinars, reading, uh, trying to take advantage of the thing that we're blessed with right now, which is time. And, you know, it's been it's been a struggle but it's also been cool to see you know my business grow in that sense you know giving uh, a little bit of an opportunity to see what it's like to uh, reach people on a, on a wider base so uh, posting things on instagram or doing you know chats like this and, and reaching people i never would have reached in a, in a gym setting so it's kind of cool in in that sense you know uh, given the circumstances it's not the greatest um you know cl uh, social climate right now but you know, you really do cherish these sort of interactions, you know, whether they be virtual uh, or not, because they, you know, that that's what we what we do for a living is we interact with people. And so when you take that away, you know, the, the trainer mind goes a little insane. We go, what are we doing? What, you know, we, we need to coach people. Oh my gosh, I, you know, I start training my dog. So my dog's going for 5k runs. You know, I, I need to train someone, but, uh, you know, um, an application like Zoom is uh, is a blessing because we, now we can uh, reach so many people and uh, continue with that that coping. Right. Well, so there's a lot to unpack there. So let's start at the end first. We were talking about um, you know this whole social distancing. I actually prefer to call it physical distancing because mm -hmm. it's not about not being social. It's just not about being in each other's faces like we used to be. Um, you know, and and I gotta say I'm impressed with humanity. I think we've been more sociable with each other during this event than, than partly because of the technology, but partly because we've proactively been reaching out through kindness for the most part. You're not hearing about, you know, massive sprees of violence or crime or people rebelling against the government here in Canada. It's, it's people have been very supportive to the point where they're making movements like, hey, why don't we all, uh, you know, go outside on our balconies at noon and, and get a round of applause going across Canada for our medical workers. Like that's, that's what we're using social media for, which, which is awesome. I also want to give credit to Good Life. Uh, they also, when they said they were going to be shutting down for a while, they also said that, hey, we're going to pay our employees for the next two weeks anyway, uh, which is great. Now, I don't know, has that, has that come to term yet? And is there any update on what they're doing for you guys? Yeah, that's, that's one of the things that made me real proud of working for a company like Good Life is that they said, you know, we're, we're shutting down, but we're going to take care of you guys for two weeks. And um, that took a lot of the stress off and, you know, I, I would be in a much different, um, you know, I think mental position if, you know, they just said, Hey, we're closing down and good luck. So I'm, I'm very proud to, to work for good life. And, uh, you know, from their perspective, they're just doing what the government and, and health Canada suggests, you know, the, the non-essential services, just, you know, have to be shut down. So, you know, we're the largest, uh, gym in Canada. So. For us to reopen is going to take, you know, a big okay from the government saying, yes, you can have, you know, larger groups um, get together. But, uh, you know, to your point about uh, the, the singing on or the applauding on balconies, and I even saw someone doing a saxophone solo on a balcony uh, applauding the, the, the doctors and the nurses. I think that's fantastic. I think, you know, we do have an opportunity here to really 
uplift those people who are still working and still keeping this this thing moving you know even grocery store workers you know um i, I have a big appreciation for people who still going to work knowing the risks and knowing the you know the the challenges that that uh, everyone faces and um it's been really cool to see really cool to see the community come together um really encouraging uh, like i said from good life and uh you know uh, there's a bunch of movements online that you know paying it forward or um you know uh, random acts of kindness and there's one in particular that's um, encouraging people to go donate blood right they, they put uh places you know um you know, uh, so that you can you can safely go and donate blood and not have to worry about you know am I going to be in a large group of people? So uh, it, it's been really cool to see Marcus. It has been, and you know, actually that last one it's funny because as you said it, the first thing that came to my mind, and it's just the way I am when I when I want something, I think about how can I get it in a creative way, and we'll come back to that as well. But as soon as you said donate blood, I'm like, huh? They have mandatory blood screening. What a smart way for me to get tested for COVID nineteen. <laughs> right? they're obviously going to screen you for that so i was like maybe fair and i should go and uh, donate some blood tomorrow so, two birds okay. one stone. right um and, but yeah really humanity has risen now i, I also want to swing back and, and applaud you actually um you, something you said at the beginning really stuck with me and and made me impressed now to give some people some background we don't really know each other, you and I, too much. You've been doing some amazing work with my wife, and she's never been physically healthier. Her nutrition's been on point. But more importantly, she's been happier. And a lot of that's because of the work you guys have been doing. So I know of you, and you know I've seen you in the gym, and we'll wave hello from a distance, of course. Um, but we don't really know each other. So for, for me to want to tell you I'm impressed, I hope you understand, um, that's a big deal for me. And the reason I'm impressed with you is because you know, you've got this time off. And the first thing you said was, I've been using this time to grow. And, and I applaud you for that. So many people are just, hey, vacation, or hey, I'm just going to sit here and let fear and panic and, and be overwhelmed. And instead, you're like, no, I'm going to learn how to transition, how to develop a new skill set, how to get on tools like Zoom that I've never really done before. And we were talking just before uh, we went live about lighting techniques and things like that. And you're like, yeah, I have no idea, right? So learning these new skill sets so that you can transition quickly so that you can continue to serve your clients. So well done. I just, I wanted to say, you know, from the business guy hat, well done to take such quick advantage and pivot. Um, so let's, let's explore that. What have you learned in the last couple of weeks and, and how are you serving your clients now that are at home? Yeah, that's, that's a great question, Marcus. And thank you for the, the vote of confidence. You know, like you said, we, we waved at each other, but never had a chance to have an in-depth talk. And, you know, I, I don't want to take credit. I, uh, I've been on a ton of webinars and uh, one in particular, you know, it really struck a chord with me in that, you know, what are we, what are we blessed with right now? You know, is this happening to us or for us? And if we look at it from the perspective of this is happening for us, we're being blessed with time. And that's something, you know, maybe we didn't have at our disposal with a busy 12 hour day or with a, you know, a hectic schedule. So I'm really, I'm really fortunate right now that, like I said, good life was able to take care of us, but also that, you know, that I hopped in on that webinar and, and realized that, Hey, I've got this, you know, great opportunity to grow and to learn about, you know, what, what this industry can really be uh, in terms of not just face-to-face -face training, but also uh, virtual training. So, I mean, um, I, I'm trying to look at it like that every single day. And, uh, you know, to answer your question of what am I doing for my clients? So that was a real struggle at first, you know, people have to digest this first. And I didn't want to be the first one to hop in there and, you know, shove down their throats. Hey, what are we, what are you doing for workouts? Or hey, what are you, what are you doing to stay on track? You know, I wanted, I want people to really, I guess, grasp the, the severity of this, you know, at the end of the day, we are, you know, practicing this, this physical distancing, which I like not social distancing, we're still social. But we, we have to kind of process this first. We have to, you know, realize the severity of this in that we're, you know, even if we're healthy individuals, you know, we could be, we could be passing something along to someone who, you know, is susceptible uh, to the virus and, and, and leaving them in a vulnerable position. So, you know, I, I gave it some time. I, I spent time researching. I spent time on webinars, reading, uh, reflecting. And, you know, at, at the one week mark, once I figured everyone had a chance to kind of digest what was happening, 
I wanted to reach out to each and every client and uh, and set up Zoom calls. So it's similar to what we're doing here, you know, I wanted to get face to face over over the laptop, which was new to me and new to a lot of clients too, and really find out, you know, there was one question that uh, that I started off with, and I wrote down here, uh, what do you need from me right now? You know, it, it, it very broad, very open ended. It's just, you know, given the the circumstances here, you know, we do have some opportunities, but we have some fears. But what what do you need from me right now? You know, is it getting more comfortable with the workouts that you're doing at home? Is it, you know, checking in face to face once a week for an accountability check? Is it, you know, talking through email? You know, uh, being in a position where you were meeting with someone two to three times per week, you're spending more time with them sometimes than they spend with their, their spouse or their parents. So they're used to that, you know, check in. And so, you know, what, what did they feel at that time they needed? So I, I started with that. I had actually 11 questions to follow that really helped me to figure out, you know, A, what they enjoyed about our interactions, B, how I can help them best from afar. And so after that discussion, you know, I let it digest for, with me a little bit. I gave myself two to three days and came up with a plan, um, an individualized plan for each and every client. So I boiled it down to essentially three services or three um, ways that I can be of service to my clients. So the first one was doing personalized programs. So obviously I'm a personal trainer. You know, one of my main functions or goals is to create a program for uh, clients based off of their you know, goals, their, their certain um, imbalances, you know, what equipment they have at home. And so that was first and foremost one thing that, uh, you know, I felt every client could benefit from, you know, that personalized program. Um, the second was something that I was taking me out of my comfort zone was a, a virtual training session. Uh, so setting up Zoom, you know, in the whatever room you have to work out in, whether it's a, you know, six by six foot room or if it's a 12 by 12 foot room or whatever equipment you have and um, offering it to them. You know, if you want to have that um, guidance and guiding eye that we can we can do that. We can uh, take advantage of the technological age that we live in and, and use Zoom to have these sessions still. And then the third one was one I... Uh, you know, I was thinking, are people really going to want to do this? Um, it, it's an accountability session. You know, I thought people would probably just scroll through it and this would not be, you know, uh, of value to anyone. And surprisingly, every single client I offered it to took it. You know, everybody is kind of craving that one-on-one -on -one communication, that one-on-one -on -one interaction, you know it was without hesitation that each person was like, yeah, I can see, you know, me wanting to do that. I really want to uh, be held accountable for my goals, or I just want to like have a talk, you know, talk about what I was struggling with during that week and ways that we can find opportunities to, uh, to, you know, overcome that challenge. Um, you know, I was really, really proud of my clients that they, they looked at that as a huge opportunity is that even though we're, you know, cooped up inside, we still have a chance to stay somewhat accountable to our, um, our modified goals, right? And uh, one of the things that I had been researching is how to break down a goal into, you know, a skill and then a practice. And that's one thing I wanted my clients to think about is when you set your goal, how can we break that down into what skill you need to acquire and then how can we practice that given the times that we're in right now? So um, the long winded answer to your question is that, Marcus, but the the yeah. summary is that I've just been trying to reach out as much as possible. And what do you need from me right now was the main question I wanted everyone to know that I'm asking them. Wow. I mean, I'm sitting here smiling genuinely because you almost sound like a student in one of our mentoring programs uh, today, which is phenomenal. Um, so many things you talked about right from what you just said now. How? What can I do for you? So when we teach our sales module, it's always... We actually don't sell people, we serve people first, last, and always. Uh, so it's not about coming at them on your terms, it's about listening to what their needs are and seeing if you're actually the person to help them with that. So I love that you're exploring that. Uh, we also believe in test everything in our programs. You know, It's not about what you think will work. So something like the accountability sessions, you're like, man, is anyone gonna go for this? You could have just had some self-doubt and kibosh the idea right from the get-go, but instead you're like, let's test it. And then you got some data and those data helped you have an offering. Um, on a personal side, 
I'm not surprised right now with what's going on in the world that, that all your clients jumped on that. And there's two reasons. One is you've already established a, an existing trusted relationship with them. I mean, you're working with them physically. They're constantly feeling uncomfortable and awkward as they learn new things and you walk them through the process, much like I do for business clients. So there's that high level of trust. Secondly, you mentioned it earlier, you know, we're, we're trapped at home and you're with your spouse, you're with your kids. It's like your safe space, which was your house, is no longer your safe space. So along comes Alex, someone we know, like, and trust who, who we've already had those safe spaces with. And he's like, would you be interested in this? Oh God, yes, please. <laughs> right? Like you are an escape from, from what is no longer a safe space. So I think it's a brilliant way to transition out the business. Um, I inwardly laughed at something you said earlier because one of my own mentors uh, fundamental beliefs is things happen for us, not to us. Right. Uh, it's all about that energy you put around things. And, and I laughed because uh, I was just having a conversation. We, we had an NLP practitioner on here earlier this week or yeah, last week. And uh, we were talking about, you know, manifesting and how you vibrate with, in frequency with the universe. And one of the things that we discussed is, yes, your energy is important. What you put out is what you attract. But, you know, the next step, of course, is to do the work. And my mind went off on this tangent about, huh, all these people always saying they never have enough time. They never have enough time to do those home projects, never enough time to get to the gym, never enough time to do that. On a manifestation level, I wonder how much energy that put out into the universe that it said, oh, you guys want more time? Here you go. Um, and, and you have to be careful about stuff like that because the universe has a really awesome sense of humor. It's not, it's not always going to give you what you want the way you want it, right? Um, so I was chuckling at that. And then the final thing on what you've been talking about, so you had your long-winded turn, I'm just always long-winded, is, and, and I want to explore this now, as you said, okay, virtual training sessions via Zoom. Now, for me, that is a huge key differentiator because right now I've watched so many fitness trainers. They're, they're doing Instagram lives for everything from breath work to daily workout sessions that you can work along with them. Uh, we've had YouTube for a long time. There's tons of YouTube videos. And, you know, I've, I've been working out for a while. I'm not saying I'm a trainer by any means. Um, but if I work out with someone and, and they're like uh, doing an exercise with me and, and I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, I looked up how to do it on YouTube. I'm like, yeah, that's not how you do it. So tell me then why you chose Zoom and having an interactive session, much like you and I are now right now, as opposed to just pre-recording a bunch of videos of you and, and competing in that saturated space. What, what drove you to this platform? Wow, that's, that's a fantastic question. And uh, I was actually talking about this yesterday with another trainer at the gym. You know, why, why not just recommend programs for, for a client to do, you know, a YouTube video that they can do and, and just allow them to do that. And, you know, we'll, we'll check in and, you know, how did the YouTube video go? Good, great. Okay, cool. Well, we'll see you when the gym reopens, you know. Um, it's realizing that there's a reason why it's called personal training, right? It's uh it's meant for the person, you know, you, you, you create the program that is completely unique to them, right? I, I've never written the, the same program twice in six years of training. Um, it really comes down to, are you assessing the, the client properly? And if so, then there's no reason why two programs would be the same. Uh, we're, we're such unique individuals. I mean, down from the physiology of our hips to our shoulders, we're, no one's created the same. So a program should never be the same. So if I were to give a client a YouTube video, um, that would be after exhausting all options. You know, after I recommend, you know, I, I'd love to put together a program for you. No, okay, what if we do a video chat? No, okay. Well, you know what? Versus sitting on the couch, a YouTube video could be a good, um, you know, supplement to your, to your health and fitness. Is it going to be the, um, the upper echelon or the, the best option for you? Probably not. And, you know, for the reasons that I kind of stated before. So, we, you know, we look at, you know, what are these YouTube videos trying to accomplish? Well, they're definitely accomplishing getting people moving, which I love. So I would never uh, knock any of, the, any of the work that anyone's been doing on YouTube. Um, I really like that people are kind of trying to encourage movement and trying to encourage, you know, 
uh, dropping in on Instagram live uh, chats and um, and doing group fitness classes. And I think that that's all fantastic. But from the perspective of, you know, how can we ensure that people are moving correctly for their body type, uh, maintaining their strength, you know, that they may have accumulated under a barbell or with dumbbells, and now all of a sudden they have none of that. Um, there are ways to do that, right? And, and maybe not described in the, uh, the Zumba Dance Party 5000 Instagram uh, video that's going on. Uh, so you know, there's, there's a time and place for both, but I think, you know, the, the really encouraging thing I've seen from my clients is that, you know, they've not only really jumped on the accountability talks, but they've really jumped on the personalized program, you know, uh, and again, that's another one where all but one has jumped on the personalized program saying, you know what, I, I'd like you to create something for me where I can follow along and I know that's going to be tailored to me. Um, and then the Instagram, uh, you know, uh, sessions and YouTube videos that could be a supplement to that work, but they know that, Hey, I am doing this program. It's designed for me. I'm going to feel good after it. Cause you know, Alex takes into account, like, you know, one, one client said to me, you know what, I just need to have a little more fun in my workouts. So I thought, you know, that's a, that's a great idea. She's a, she's a 75 year old living alone, but said, you know what, I want to have some fun. It's me and my cat. You know, I miss going to um, our, our group training or to our one-on-one. So when I was creating her program, I'm like, how can I make her program more fun? Well, I know that she likes music. I know she likes to move a little bit. So let's uh, let's suggest a song for her to play and then give her some almost dance moves to do uh, after she's done her strength work. So, um, you know, to, to answer your question again, like I've been really loving how creative I've had to be uh, to, to reach out to my clients. And uh, it's, you know, we can come back to that uh, that point of growth, Marcus, is that, you know, this this is where growth is made, right? When you have that pressure uh, under time, right? And, uh, you know, I think we're, you know, you're in the same space where you have people who are, you know, under you uh, as mentees and like watching them persevere through this is honestly very, very cool to see. Yeah. No, it is. And uh, yeah, it's been rewarding. Actually, it's, uh, we, we've, so what we've been doing to support people is not just this daily support call for our community, um, but the way our programs work is it's a once a month dedicated three hour session with a once a week, 10 minute status call. And because all of this is going on, of course, that to pivot successfully, to transition successfully, um, you need to accelerate what you're currently doing. Back to that point of you spending this time to learn as much as possible and put it into action. So what we've been doing is a one-on-one -on -one half hour with each one of our, our students in our programs uh, every single day, uh, free of charge, because that's what we talked about as a team and are willing to do for, for the people that work with us. And we've watched so many of them um, get so much work done in such a short amount of time. Uh, we got Liz actually is on the call right now. She's one of my Shining Star graduates, and she's a, you know, she's a wedding planner. So, you know, going from live events to suddenly not being able to do live events, you know, day one when this happened, there was a little bit of heaviness, a little bit of panic, a little bit of fear, which is natural. And then after about 20 minutes of talking to each other, we had a plan. And by day two, the first steps of that plan were done. It was the market research like you were doing. It was talking to existing clients and getting feedback, talking to vendors to see if they like the idea. Now we're putting together the marketing campaign. We've got a pricing model together. And by the end of day today, it's actually going out live, which is super exciting. Um, so I won't tell you what the idea is, but it's awesome. And, and yeah, so that's, that's how quickly you need to transition in this time. Uh, so we're doing the same as you. How can we support you? What do you need right now? Uh, and actually, Liz brought a tear to my eye, and I don't think she even realizes it because I was a little tired when I woke up this morning. We've been all going hard, lots of long hours, lots of people to support. And uh, on our call, before our call today, I said, hey, would you be okay, actually, if I just checked the email you sent with your status and, you know, went and actually had a shower because I haven't even taken care of me today? And she said, you know, it just occurred to me that you're here for us every single time, and I haven't asked how you're doing. How are you doing? And it was just the most beautiful thing for her to ask. So since you're there, Liz, thank you for asking and bringing that tear to my eye. Yeah, I'm doing wonderfully. And it's, and it's because I have people like you in my life um, and people like Alex. So back to Alex. Alex, my superstar. Just say high five, Liz. That's awesome. Good it job. is awesome, right? Because it is all about relationships. So 
again, what I was driving at, and I want to be really specific too, because yes, I appreciate the efforts that everyone's doing, whether it's on, um, you know, Facebook Live or whether it's on YouTube or Instagram or pre-recorded or whatever. Everybody's stepping up, and they're just they're they're giving of themselves to others, which is important, and, and I love that. Uh, I mean, even Good Life has made all of the online classes at at Les Mills available, but those are all like pre-recorded sessions. And what I'm really liking about what you're doing is, is exactly what you said, that differentiation is that if I book a session with you and we work out virtually, you, you know, you're there to demonstrate, I'm there to then do it while you watch. And, and because my body is unique to me, the way I move, the way I breathe, um, my strength limitations, my flexibility limitations, whatever challenges I'm facing, you're there to actually work it through with me individually. So I love that approach. Let me ask you this, as the world starts to normalize again, as good life starts to reopen, as we start to have these you know, group classes again in person, do you think there's an opportunity here for good life to continue on with these online and virtual coaching uh, sessions as well? Great point, you know, that's, I think they'd be um, really missing out if they're not exploring this right now, you know, given the circumstances and given the time, you know, can we look at maybe reaching a wider range of people through these um, at home sessions, you know, and no good life's business model is a gym and they want to, you know, expand and be the largest, uh, you know, and they are the largest in Canada and they want to continue being, but, you know, sometimes it, it's looking beyond that and saying, you know, our vision is to, you know, allow every Canadian to lead a happy and healthy life. And so if they can't make it to a gym or, you know, there, there's a time issue there, you know, what better way to reach out to people than through these virtual sessions or uh, through online coaching? And, you know, luckily, Good Life does make it quite clear that, you know, we can do one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions with people in the gym. And then if we have any sort of online clientele, you know, that's, that's totally fine with them. You know, they, they've allowed us to kind of branch off if we need to. So... Right. You know. Well, yeah, they're giving you the opportunity to take care of you, which is which is awesome. And I agree with you. I mean, it's great to say I want to be the largest in Canada, that kind of thing. Um, but to shift that slightly, it would be I want to serve the most people in Canada. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and no matter how many good lives, I mean, the joke is they're almost as common as Tim Hortons now. Right. Every corner yeah. seems to have a good life on it. But yeah, I think I think it's worth exploring for many reasons. One. Um, if you don't need to have such massive amounts of physical space, then you're reducing your overhead. So as a business, that's going to increase your profitability anyway. Two, if you can reach out to that many more people without having to really add a lot of additional cost to things, then you're up in your profitability again and in the process helping that many more people. Um, one of the most successful fitness coaches I know. Uh, we actually met when I did my, my stage show a couple of years back and we've become great friends ever since. He lives in Grand Prairie, Alberta, right? And he strictly does online and he's doing quite well. And that's always been his business model is online. And it's the same type of approach as what you're exploring now. He's got it down to a system. He's got the right tools in place, everything else. So, so to shift in that industry, there's many people that already did it and it already exists. So I don't think it would be a big challenge for a company with the, with the power uh, of good life, with the vision of good life to continue forward with something like this. So it's not necessarily a temporary measure. It could be yet another way to serve more people. And you could be a driving force in that as you continue to measure uh, and test how it's going with your clientele. Yeah, the, the feedback so far has been so positive, which is fantastic. You know, I love that, you know, we're, we're in a position here where we can experiment a little bit, like you had mentioned, you know, try everything. And um, I, I could certainly see how Good Life would see the benefit in this and, uh, and encourage, you know, maybe a group of trainers to say, hey, let's test pilot this thing. You know, you've been reaching out to your clients and, you know, you've been doing online sessions. Like, why not see if, there, if there's something to this online training? And, you know, that's fantastic that uh, the trainer you worked with lives in Alberta and yet was still able to obviously give you great results. Because I think people who have, you know, been in that, in that space for a little while, they see, you know, the mistakes that people make early on. You know, whether that's being spending too much time on, on you know, a video call or maybe not enough time on actually working out, you know. Um, I've been I've been in contact with a couple of people who've done the online training for a while now, and just seeing their perspective of it, and 
a lot of their work was trial and error, but uh, a company like Good Life, I can totally see uh, branching out into this space um, sooner rather than later. Yeah, it makes sense. They've been a leader in so many ways. Why not be a leader again in, in as things normalize? And I think that's the big thing here that I'm, I'm watching happen as, as the days unfold is originally everyone just took a minute, right? They just took a pause. What's going on? And, and now we're at a point where uh, many of us have processed grief is actually what all the leading mental health experts are saying, because we've watched the old, the comfortable, the what was evaporate. You know, the traditional rat race, the nine to five gone, the commuting in, commuting out. So all of this way, like that's been the way for so long. It's always been the minority that's been the entrepreneurs or the minority that's been working with distributed teams. But now everybody's here and, and we're all cut up and we're all on the same page. And you're starting to see companies go, okay, we need to invest in, in something virtual. We need to invest in something online right now so that we can continue to have cash flow to get through this. Uh, I mean, a week ago already, Expedia was lost like over $40 million in canceled flights. And that was a week ago. And, wow. and you look at the difference from where we were uh, as a society then to now, I can't imagine like how big a company do you have to be that you can eat $40 million and continue, right? So these yeah. companies have to explore new ways. And when you're investing all of this time and investing all of this money, investing all of this manpower so that you can just continue when things normalize and, and in your industry, when the gyms open again, you're not just suddenly going to go back to how it was. What would be the point? That would be a total waste of all the, that investment time and money, right? Um, so I think we will see uh, a lot more leveraging of tools such as Zoom and, and figuring out other ways to, uh, you know, do more with the online platforms, which, which for me is great because that's our whole business model. So for us, it's, uh, it's kind of just another day at the office, really. Um, the big difference for me in my personal life, because I, I want to get a little bit personal with you now, the biggest difference there is I still go out and do sales calls. Not now, but I, I, you know, even though I work from home remotely, I still go and do sales calls. I still do live events because I, I love people and engaging with people. Um, so we've had to transition. You know, a lot of our live events, instead of just outright canceling them, we move them to online events. You know, and now we're having to come up with new ways of of getting across the same impact in our mentoring programs because in person really makes a difference. Relationships matter. So how do you how do you continue to move forward and take care of you so that you can take care of those around you, right? Um, so let's talk about that. I mean, how are you doing? Like, how has this affected you, the person, not you, the personal trainer? What, what fears came up for you? What challenges are you facing right now? And I'm going to ask you your very first question on that. What can I do for you right now? Mm, wow. I, I haven't had it uh, mirrored to me. So thank you for that. So, um, you know, that's, it's interesting because you, uh, you know, I had a couple things come to mind, but one being, you know, some people are, are really struggling from this and others, you know, are adapting well and the introverts kind of looking around like, well, what's changed? You know, I, I'm, a, I'm an INTJ personality. It's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm more of a, a giver, right? So, I mean, I really cherish and flourish in one-on-one -on -one interactions. So, you know, having this kind of open discussion and with Farrah and Liz, uh, as well, listening, you know, I, I love this kind of open platform. And, um, I think this is really what I've been struggling with is I don't get that, you know, open uh, communication with, you know, with clients or with other you know, trainers at the gym. You know, I, I really enjoy that small group feel of, you know, let, let's talk about, uh, you know, what we're excited about in life or what we're struggling with in life. You know, I love the all, all, all aspects of it, but, uh, you know, where I'm at right now is that I'm kind of adapting as everybody is, you know, I have a new schedule, a new norm is, you know, no longer uh, wake up, shower, meditate, eat, leave, you know, now it's wake up, read, journal, meditate, shower. So, I mean, you know, I've, I've kind of changed the, the routine, but, you know, I, I'm adapting, right? So, you know, the, the first kind of alarm that went off in the head when this, this news came out was, well, I'm, you know, I'm dependent on income from a gym. And if that gym's not open, I don't make income. Um, so good luck providing that little grace period was great. And, you know, I think had I not used those last two weeks to, to learn and to grow, 
you know, I'd, I'd be worried as, as hell tomorrow, you know, thinking this is my first day without a paycheck, you know, and how long since I was in college or, or, you know, even before that, probably high school. So, um, you know, I'm very fortunate right now. And I'll, I'll be honest, Marcus, like practicing gratitude has been such a saving grace for me. You know, I could, and, and anyone could sit here and, and be like, woe is me. And why did this happen to me? And, um, you know, why is the, the earth putting us through this? And, you know, I think of the philosophical reasons too. You, you brought up the, the interesting point of, you know, oh, I wish I had more time. It's like, your wish is my command. Here you go. The universe right. says, um, I've thought I've done a lot of, uh, reflecting on what this is doing to our environment, you know, the positive that it's doing to our environment. You know, we're cutting down the amount of emissions and the amount of people commuting to and from work. You know, the, the wildfires in, in Australia really, really scared me and a lot of people, I think. And I think we were getting to a point as a society where we were so, we were so caught up in routine that we don't, we didn't necessarily realize the real effects that, you know, we're wearing down this planet. So if we can come out of this and look at, you know, the positive effects that we may have had to the, the, the atmosphere and, and the environment, I think that would be a, a huge positive to take from it. Obviously, it's a tragedy, but uh, there's certain things to be grateful for. So, I mean, you know, I, uh, I have a lot of things that I've been reflecting on, and I'd be interested actually to hear from your perspective, you know, what, uh, what, what was going through your head as it was happening, and what, what have you done to kind of, you know, stay, you know, you look great, like you look like you're, you're smiling. And so what have you been able to do to stay uh, in that positive mindset? Yeah, well, first, let's finish up with what you were saying. And then yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to talk about me. Um, so firstly, yeah, gratitude is everything. It, it absolutely is, um, to your point, that energy we put out, if what we wake up with, and, and I don't know if you've ever read or listened to Brene Brown. Brene Brown's amazing. She's one of the leading experts on uh, mental health and mindset. And she talks about how it's, it's a fascinating cycle we put ourselves into because the first thought we have in our head in the morning is not enough sleep. And then the last thought we have before we go to bed is not enough accomplished. So we're constantly in this cycle of not enough. And of course, if that's the energy that we're putting out there, then the universe, God, whatever it is that is personal to you, we'll call it the void. Then what will happen is, is the void will give you more to be worried about. Whereas when you practice gratitude, uh, first thing in the morning, last thing at night, that's what your subconscious works on. Then the void will actually give you more to be grateful for for so you asked me how am i doing and and how am i how's my routine adjusting well part of it is that the gratitude gratitude is continuing to make things fortunate for us um you know i live with my wife of course we don't have any children we're very fortunate that we have uh, a beautiful home that we can live in um i'm actually really fortunate because i am spending more time with her than i regularly do and sure there's little hiccups here and there but you know we laugh through it and we get through it and it's been wonderful like it's been great we've been doing some house cleaning together we we're going to be rearranging some rooms and stuff like that we opened up our rooftop patio the other day so you know, it's, it's fun because she's my adventure partner. So having that type of outlook to things as opposed to, oh, I'm stuck with her again for another day. Well, guess what? It totally changes how your day is going to go. Um, you mentioned routines, how you had routines before. So congrats. And then they've just shifted slightly. Well, same thing. I mean, we had routines before because I believe in routines. I believe in making the most of today because today is really all you have. You can't really change what happened yesterday. You don't really have full control over tomorrow, but you have control over today. So today, um, you know, this is my routine and it's the same every single day. So what have I been doing? Uh, I've been paying more attention to me right? I've been shaving more regularly. I know that's obviously not something you're doing right now, but I've been shaving more regularly. And that's, that's something that's important to me. Um, I've been getting on these daily calls every day and providing a little bit more structure for my community. And that's been rewarding for me to see them benefit, benefit from it. Uh, I'm continuing with things that were working for me. I journal first thing in the morning, last thing at night. Um, we do gratitudes. We have meditations as we go to bed. We, we have a guided meditation we go to. I've been open to exploring new activities with my wife. We did a breathwork workshop through Instagram the other evening. Uh, I haven't really done an official breathwork workshop, so it was interesting. Um, I continue to work out. So how am I working out? I actually am using an app that
that I found because for the most part, like I've been working with a physiotherapist for years through a shoulder injury. So my movement and flexibility is back to where it is to be. And I've worked hard on that. So I maintain it by using this incredible body weight workout. Um, you've actually been a motivation as well, coming up with these creative workouts. So I've been doing these wife workouts where I've been using her as my weights. Uh, I've seen other people doing leg presses with couches with people on them and stuff like that. So all kinds of creative things out there, but just having that routine in place is so important. Otherwise I would probably just keep the covers over my head till 2 PM, look outside, see that it's raining and say, okay, I'm going to try again tomorrow. What's the, what's the point of that? That doesn't help you yeah. get any further ahead in any way. Um, so let's talk about that because I mean, you know, I've actually, we, we just did our Sunday morning check-in and uh, I lost six pounds two weeks ago. And this week I've, I'm the same weight. Uh, my visceral fat is down. I'm one point away from a healthy range. Um, I'm, I'm two pounds away from no longer being obese and simply only being overweight. So I'm excited about that. I, I say that with some cynicism because I laugh at how the you know, default measurements work because I don't actually consider myself obese, but according to the numbers, I'm obese. Um, but for me, it's about the progress. So things have been going well. So I still do that every week. We've been, we've been eating healthy. You see, uh, you know, when we cook, we post a lot to you. That's part of the routines you ask of people. Um, you know, and just, yeah, just having the same times I find is important. Get up at the same time, eat at the same time, go to bed at the same time, not even for any particular physical benefit, that's your area of expertise, but just for that routine so that your body knows when it wants to be energized, when your mind knows when it can focus. Um, you know, my team, we've been accomplishing more uh, in this, in this downtime than we ever have before. But for us, it hasn't even really been a downtime. Like we're in remote project management. So suddenly the entire world wants in on the secret of what we've been doing forever. Um, so, you know, things have been, thankfully, we're blessed and, and the bills are paid. Um, so life is good. I'm very, very fortunate for that. Even my own students, we, we had some concern and I'm going to be very vulnerable because, you know, they're all at different stages in their entrepreneurial journey. And this was the first month where their tuition payment was due. And we were like, huh, I wonder, you know, what are we going to predict? How many people are just going to say, hey, can I postpone my payment this month? Or, hey, I need to pause the program or drop out altogether. And so we ran different scenarios about what that might look like. And I am so proud and honored to be working with this pe these people because not only did a single person not cancel or postpone or ask for any of that, everybody paid on time for the first time ever. And wow. it was amazing that, that everybody did that. Um, so yeah, we're, we're really in a good place. And, and as a business, I believe the same as I do as a person. I believe I need to take care of myself first before I can take care of others. Right. So tell us some ways, Alex, then tell us some ways that at home, very, very practical, simple ways, not, you know, something, obviously you would have to customize something for individuals, but what are some quick tips? What matters most? What, what should I be focused on at home? If I'm just sitting around and Netflixing all day, what, what really could I be doing with some of my time instead? Well, first and foremost, I mean, and you know, uh, by the way, congratulations with the, the weigh in and the, the results. I think that's fantastic. Uh, you touched on it and it's a huge, uh, part of what I, um, program for my clients first and foremost, not just exercise wise, but the first thing that I sent to them was a schedule. It was, it was a calendar and it, uh, it essentially was a, a blank, blank slate. Um, after doing some research, they asked astronauts, how do you deal with isolation, right? Astronauts can be isolated for up to two to three years. How do you deal with the isolation? And the overwhelming response was that they had a schedule to adhere to, right? They had a routine. You know, without that routine, they can, you know, they they go stir crazy. So they said, you know, my advice for for uh, people at this time is create and establish a routine, right? There's a, and there's a reason why they call it an exercise routine. You know, a, an exercise program is just a piece of paper until you make it a routine. So once you kind of have that in practice, that's where you start noticing results, right? As uh, you know, yourself or Farrah can attest to, once you get the ball rolling with exercise and it's finally become a routine is where you start to, you know, enjoy those benefits. 
the, the, you know, the happy endorphin rush or, you know, the little bit of weight loss here or the strength gain there. Um, it, it's establishing that routine. So, uh, you know, I, I've really been trying to encourage people to find what their routine is in this new norm. You know, adapt to, to what situation you're in and then um, let's start establishing. You know, we, we had set meeting times, you know, for instance, Farron and I met Monday, Wednesday, Friday at five. You know, for, for clients, let's figure out what's going to be your workout time, you know. When are you going to have a fun workout with, you know, with your husband? Or when are you going to have a fun workout, you know, uh, doing a dance track? You know, so let's let's establish a routine and then we'll we'll build on on pieces from there. But, uh, you know, I, I kind of went off, tra- off topic from your question. But uh, the, the other thing that also came to mind, and sorry to go off topic here again, is that um, John Berardi, one of the leading nutrition uh voices in, in the world, who's the, the founder of um, Precision Nutrition and also wrote Changemaker, uh, said, with everything that's going on right now, we can dwell on things that we've lost. So maybe we've lost income, we've lost, you know, our job, or we've lost, you know, face-to-face interaction. He said, write that down on a piece of paper, you know, sit with it for a second, acknowledge that those things you've lost, and then take a match to it light it and watch the, the, the ashes, you know, disperse because those are the things that we've lost and then take another piece of paper and look at things that you've gained and everyone can say that they've, they've gained at least a little bit of time. You know, you know, there's obviously this some, some that are uh, in the minority nurses, doctors who are you know, giving up their time you know, to help all of us, but you know, we've all kind of gained something from this. So I think if we can really, start to establish those new norms and start to establish that gratitude like we, we had talked about, you know, we're going to notice some people coming out of this thing stronger than they were going in. So I, I'm going to be honest, I don't even remember your first question, but I hope that I answered it somewhere in there. <laughs> Not at all. And that's okay. It was just some quick tips for at home, but I'm liking this. It's an organic conversation. Are you open to me um, just challenging you in a moment in a healthy way? Sure. So that topic you're talking about. So here's the first thing. I'm going to say a very bold statement and I want to see whether you agree or disagree. Fair? So I can tell you with certainty that there is not a single event that has ever occurred in your life that has upset you. Agree or disagree? Uh, Disagree. Okay. So now I'm going to prove to you why there's never been an event that has ever occurred to you that has actually upset to you in your life. And, and it's, it's based on what you were just talking about. So an event is an event. We actually have no control over the events. The event happened, right? The event happened. It's the meaning that we actually attach to the event that can cause us distress or cause us joy. So in the exercise you were talking about where look at all the things we've lost, put it on a piece of paper, burn it, great. Look at all the things we've gained, also great. But why not look at the event and then, and, and then separate it from the meaning and have people write down the meaning that that event had. And if it's something that's not bringing them joy or not helping them grow and move forward, burn that and instead change the meaning around the event. And I'll give you a perfect example. So here's an event. I come home from doing, let's say, a live event. So lots of event words happening. So I come home, I'm exhausted, and I just take my dress shirt off and I throw it on the floor, grab some rum, go up to the rooftop patio, right? So event meaning response outcome. So the event is I threw stuff on the floor, okay? Farah comes home, she sees it on the floor, and the meaning she associates it to it, just for people that aren't aware yet, fair is my wife. So the meaning she associates to it is that lazy so-and-so. So her response is not favorable. And the outcome is, is I'm probably no longer enjoying rum on the rooftop because I'm being told to put my clothes away. <laughs> right. right now let's look at it the other way event. I dropped my, my dress shirt on the floor. The event didn't change. Farah comes home She sees the uh, on the floor and she realizes that's out of the norm for me. I probably had a long day. That poor guy, she picks it up for me. So now there's a different meaning, a different response. She sees the rum on the on the table and with a glass beside it because I'm thoughtful like that. So instead, she ends up pouring herself some and now we're on the rooftop together enjoying the evening. Right. The event didn't change, which is why I say with certainty, 
no event has ever happened in your life that upset you. It's always been the meaning we attach to it. So to make that relevant to what we're going through now, there's a lot of events unfolding like crazy and people are feeling a lot, um, a lack of control. Everything's out of their control because things just keep changing every day. Even Liz and I were talking this morning about this plan. You know, if, if you're smaller than a group of, or bigger than a group of 50, you're in trouble. Now it's if you're bigger than a group of five. Well, that changed quickly. Can't change the event, but we can change the meaning we associate to it. Right. So I just wanted to challenge you with that. Uh, thank you for being open. So now let's get back to what that original question was. What do you think are some of the top tips for us to focus on just at home to maintain our physical health, to maintain our sanity? What can we do, Alex? Okay, so yeah, top tips. So, and, and I love talking about this because this, this is my bread and butter is exercise. So if we were to think about, you know, what, what can we do to get motivated, to get moving? It doesn't have to be at this point a, a one hour workout. Like I love the idea of waking up to 10 squats, get in the shower, you know, I'm, I'm uh, getting some breakfast going and I'm going to do five lunges, right? I like the idea of now, especially if people are working from home, why not just spread that workout throughout the day? You know, just pick up, uh, pick up the couch, put it back down. I'm going to walk over here, pick up the chair, do a couple squats. You know, that's really where, you know, the, the idea of a workout, uh, you know, 200 years ago, they'd be like, what? I, I do that all day. This is what uh, I do to survive. You know, I go out, I, I hunt a, a deer, I come back, I skin that thing, and then I cook it. You know, it's like that's a workout in and of itself. So how can we kind of get back to our primal roots in a way and just move more, right? I do like the idea of fitness trackers and things like that telling us how many steps we get. That's a good way of tracking it. Um, but how can we look back at our day and say, you know, was I a little bit more primal today? Did I, you know, try you know and that's why i like the idea of uh, also bodyweight exercises like we have a huge opportunity here to learn bodyweight exercises and i'm not just talking push-ups squats lunges like let's bring it back and do bear crawls or spider crawls crab walks um you know uh inchworms you know these are some great exercises that help you to control your body and uh they're really what we did before we had barbells and dumbbells and gyms and big muscly guys slamming down weights and yelling yeah so it, uh, it can, you know, open some eyes and some doors for people. You know, I've been loving just getting back to my roots of doing, you know, calisthenics of, you know, right. when I'm after running and going to the park and doing a few chin-ups and doing some push-ups and people in the park looking at me funny. But, you know, I love it. I love doing a movement like that. So um, get creative. Get creative with, you know, the, not just the moves you're doing, but how often you're moving. So that would be point one. And I wrote down a couple notes here. The second note for exercise tips would be tempo. So we no longer have control over how many, how much weight you know we can lift, unless you're you know uh, fortunate enough to have a, a dumbbell or barbell set at home. So let's think about the tempo. So if I'm doing a push up and I'm used to you know going down on three seconds, up on one, let's go ahead and double that. You know, go down for six seconds and up for two, or even let's extend that to twelve and then four. You know, let's see how much control you have over your body, right? You know, it's great and good to be able to curl 500 or you know, 100 pounds, bench 500, but can you do a controlled push-up, right? Can you use those stabilizing muscles of the shoulder and the core and the glutes? And, you know, you, you're really going to, uh, you know, untap some, some uh, strength potential by focusing on that stability and on the tempo of the exercise. So uh, get creative, focus on the tempo, and my third point is, hey, we could be out of the gym for a couple months. So what happens when you're injured? You usually take a couple months off, you rest for a bit, and then you get started on a rehab program. So for any of my clients that have imbalances, which is 100% of them, I'll be honest, I have imbalances, right? When I'm running, I use the hell out of my right side and now my left side. Mm. So guess what I'm doing during this time? I'm working on those imbalances. So I'm doing my split squats. I'm doing my... Uh, long stride walking, you know, I'm doing my single leg deadlifts, you know, I'm making sure that when I come out of this, I'm going to have less imbalances than I had before. So that would be my third point right there is being able to, I think I froze there for a second, but anyways, hopefully you can still hear me. Um, I still hear you. And, okay. you're and then the, uh, so being able to work on that, on the balance between our right and left side, or, you know, if our hip has been bothering us or our foot has been bothering us, 
hey, let's get creative. Let's, let's you know, add some stretching throughout the day or let's uh, start doing some stability work throughout the day, you know. We can really uh, come out of this thing more stable than before. Maybe not stronger overall, um, depending on what we're looking to do, but uh, we can come out of this with less injuries and feeling much better, you know, moving much better. So get creative, change up the tempo, work on those imbalances. I'm loving everything you're saying, like absolutely loving it. I love tempo workouts. They're one of my favorite, most challenging things. I'm going to add in a little bit more flexibility and working on imbalances. Those are great points. I mean, I'm in a stage in my life where uh, injuries happen. You know, I, I was plagued with injuries for almost two years straight and, and it was frustrating. And it was a very simple question that my wife turned and asked me one day and she's like, well, how long do you warm up? And I was just like, warm up. <laughs> right but obviously that's important so you know i love some of these takeaways uh thank you so much um you never did answer the question of how i can serve you today but that's okay we can talk about that offline sometime uh what i'd like to do is i'm going to wrap up alex once i do say goodbye and everything please don't leave i'd like to have a quick little talk with you after the call um and in the meantime though is there any parting wisdom you would like to leave with us beside those three tips I think, you know, it, thanks for having me on and listen, Farah, I hope you, you guys, you know, if not learn something, you know, we're able to, uh, you know, find a little bit of humor in our talk or, uh, you know, hopefully a little bit of positivity. But uh, in terms of wisdom, I think it's stay in the present, stay in, stay in the moment we're in right now. You know, wisdom doesn't come from, you know, dwelling on the past or, or, or fretting on the future. Like we, we have infinite wisdom accessible to us, but we have to become still in the present moment. So look at where you're at right now. You know, if, you, if it's noticing your breath or if it's noticing, you know, the way you're feeling or your sensation, you know, just whenever you're, you know, struggling or, you know, if I can leave you with anything to suggest it, it is uh, be more, be more present. Right. I agree. Um, the only thing I would add to that is never be afraid to ask for help when you need it. All right. So today, that's what we've done. We've been hearing from uh, Alex Bornemisa on how to get some help with your nutrition, your physical health, a bit of mental health in there as a bonus. Uh, so thank you very much for being here today. And uh, yeah, for those that attended, thank you for your time and for honoring us. And uh, we will all speak again soon. Bye for now.